Hello and welcome back to Frogboy X1 Gaming. I'm Andrew and today we're doing uh, day 21, uh, switching from NVIDIA to AMD. Well, actually I did a live stream. I invited you guys to come and hang out with me, but I wanted to go ahead and do a video for the people that like to watch just the videos. This one will be a little bit shorter. In the live stream today, we talked about, you know, like the, um, the overwhelming, uh, <clears throat> We, we talked about the challenges of, of switching over to gaming um, over, over from a, di a different brand to another brand. And it's difficult. There's a lot of anxiety involved and, and that's, and that's across many, many brands. But one of the things that I've kind of, what I, that I've kind of learned is switching from the Nvidia graphics card over to the AMD 7900 XT is there are things about the AMD card that I love enough to where I'm like, okay, cool. This makes it worth it. And, and, and you get immersed in that experience just as quickly as, as you would be from the other one. So it, it, it does take a, it does take a couple of days and you're going to have to play around with things and you're going to have to see things. But I do just kind of believe that that the last two generations for the AMD graphics cards have, have brought enough VRAM to, to ensure that those cards, you know, are going to be meaningful purchases longer than what the NVIDIA, the NVIDIA cards have done. So I know, I know for a fact, and I know that just out of my experience with this, with this being like week three, this is, this is three weeks today that, that I have had, um, that I've that I've been solely on the AMD graphics card now. Like I haven't, I I I didn't go back. I sold that thing immediately as soon as I pulled it out. I actually sold it before I even figured out the problem that was happening, you know, with the whole memory thing. And by the time I got <clears throat> everything all figured out, and I've been playing with this, and I've been playing new games, and I was, you know, doing some benchmarks today. I did a bunch of benchmarks for Remnant 2. I did one for Red Dead Redemption 2 for Control Remedy. Very, very good performance. And the things that I'm seeing with this card, while, yeah, you are going to leave, you know, some, some, some better ray tracing performance on the, on, on the, um, <clears throat> on the table from switching over to the AMD card. Um, I do feel, I do feel like if if ray tracing and that type of experience is important to you, then you will get a you will get a decent enough experience at 1440p on this card with ray tracing. Like it 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 is pretty good. Like it's pretty stable. It it works well. Uh, just playing Control Remedy today. Like I love that game. I I. I Bought that game when it first came out. I've beaten it multiple times on Xbox, PlayStation. I'm working on a playthrough now with the PC. And to tell you the truth, like the ray tracing in that and the <clears throat> at 4K, it it is playable. I mean, like I beat that game at 30 frames per second, but you're right around like 40 to 45 frames. And I mean, while that's still playable with a good, you know, VRR screen or whatever, like you can definitely play it. And that game there, the uh, the combat and stuff in that game, it 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 doesn't feel like super terrible to play that at. Um, I actually played through it again a second time on the PlayStation Five with, or no, I played through it on the Xbox again with the ray tracing enabled the whole time at 30 frames per second. And then I played through it on the PlayStation five, I believe with just 60 FPS and, and like the, uh, the experience of playing that game at a lower frame rate, it isn't terrible, but I mean, if you really want like your 4k and you want all your bells and whistles and you want to have your ray tracing on, um, it did feel better at medium ray tracing. Like it was closer to 50 to 60 frames a second. So, I mean, that's definitely playable for that game, but at 1440 P with ray tracing maxed out, you could get well over 60. And that was, that was fine with me. It was like 70 to 80 frames a second. So that there felt pretty dang good. Probably the best experience I've had with control remedy today, even the, uh, even the 3080, I think the 3080 at 1440p with DLSS uh, was doing pretty good. But you don't get AMD. I mean, you don't get FSR support in that game. So it's uh, it's kind of a trade-off, you know? I mean, like the, the experience that you get and the way it looks with ray tracing versus the way it looks without ray tracing, which you get much higher frame rate if you don't have the ray tracing on, even in 4K, 
very playable in 4k with this card well over well over 60 frames a second easily and and it, and it just feels incredible to play it's one of those games where the ray tracing in that game does look good and it does add to the overall quality of the experience so if you're playing that that one's kind of a hard one for me to uh to decide if i want ray tracing or not and for me i would just go with the 1440p mode because it looks absolutely incredible at 1440p with ray tracing enabled and it's still playable at 4k if you have to have the 4k like it is playable and it does feel better on medium and you still get the good the good reflections the good reflective surfaces look pretty decent with that so i i i feel like you know i feel like some of these games are at a, oh, and I I didn't benchmark Fallout 76 today, but I did play it for a little while. But the, here's the thing, man. Like, we don't like the 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 bonus of buying a new card is to see your old games be a lot more enjoyable. Like, that's a good thing. Like, the, that that's like that's a bonus. That shouldn't be a selling point. That should be a bonus that you can that you can get better better experience from playing these older games on your newer cards what really matters is going forward and the experience going forward that's what matters the most and if your experience can stay consistent like so far it's felt pretty consistent at least at least at 1440p like i've got games that i can run at 6k over 60 frames a second and then i've got games that barely hit 60 frames a second at 4k and to me that's you know that's is is long so when i put my games on there in 4k if i'm hitting 60 frames a second and i can play that game like that's fine with me a few frames under a few frames above that that's not really a big deal to me the the stuttering the inconsistency of the overall frame rate and stuff that's what was bugging me and it and it was uh and it was a point with my 3080 graphics card where there were some games that to get a playable frame rate i had to enable the dlss if i wanted to play those at ultra and i know that sounds stupid like i i, I get it i know that sounds stupid but if you're coming from a console like i did you know like xbox playstation 5 if you're coming from a console and like <clears throat> and you're wanting to see your games at 4k at, at max settings and all of that stuff you know the stuff that the consoles promised you and then you always hear people talking about the pc experience and how yeah it's better on the pc and you're going to get better frame rate and you're going to get this and then when you get over there and you have those expectations set up and you get on pc then then it then it does it kind of it kind of um it kind of pushes you to fomo even faster and even harder so here's here's the deal i i'm starting to calm down a little bit with the whole pc thing and, and my expectations um today today was something today doing that remnant test kind of uh kind of showed me some things that i was like wow this is uh this is absolutely incredible and so because i'm playing on a 1440p monitor both 4k and 1080p are still useful for me i can still kind of split the difference with 1080p and get maximum settings and get a, a much higher frame rate and it still looks good it still looked good on on a game like remnant on a game like remnant you could play that at 1080p max settings you could play it at 1440p max settings or you could play it at 4k max settings and the game is going to pretty much look good either way you do that now i can't guarantee that it would look that great on a t on a 4k screen but at least in terms of being able to play that at 1080p on the 1440p monitor I was pretty happy with that. I was pretty happy with that. So that's something that I'm going to take into consideration going forward. Maybe I should have done this with the 3080 card. Maybe I should have uh, gave 1080p a shot, you know, and, and seeing what that was like. But I was more worried about like the visuals during that time. But seeing as I've got more more tools at my disposal now that are that are easier to find in the AMD software, it makes it a little bit easier for me to uh, to not necessarily justify things because I can still play these at my higher frame rates, but now I can now now that I don't have that crutch of DS, DLSS to to rely on all the time, it's kind of interesting. It's kind it's kind of good to have to see exactly you know what a card can and can't do. Like it's 
it's um it's kind of it's kind of liberating to be completely honest with you because i relied on dlss for absolutely everything every game that had it i relied on it and good thing most of the new games coming out have it because all the older games man if they didn't run good wow you didn't get nothing for them so i mean it's like when i'm sitting there on Red Dead Redemption 2 at over 100 frames a second, and I'm playing that, you know, at 4K and stuff, and it's and it's going, you know, it's doing its little thing, you know, going from like 70 to over 100, and I'm just like, wow, this is absolutely incredible. This is absolutely incredible. And being able to, to experience that with such high-quality visuals and everything and having that high of a frame rate that is absolutely insane <laughs> absolutely insane now that game did run really well on that 3080 and i did do benchmarks for that and i did show that game off and um and all of that stuff and that that was that was pretty well optimized for the 3080 so that was a good experience um i know that some of these videos that i've made over the past 21 days would probably have you thinking that this 3080 was just a complete piece of garbage and it wasn't worth it the truth is it was fine up until I started playing these newer games on it. Like I was fine with it and I was, and I was having a good time and I spent a lot of time defending that 3080 10 gig too. And it went, once it gets to a point where, where it's like, I'm, I'm not getting that experience that I wanted or, or that I was getting used to having, and I'm starting to get, you know, like a lesser experience that to me, I'm used to being on a console where the where the experience gets better, like the visuals get better over over the generation, not worse. So so it's 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 kind of hard, man. It's going to be tough for a lot of us console gamers when we start coming to PC. We're going to have these unrealistic expectations and it's um it's just something that's coming with it, man. And and I hear a lot of the PC guys saying, that, "Hey man, we don't want any more of these guys over here." but it's 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 inevitable man a lot of these guys are going to start switching because a lot of these people are getting about tired of uh of not having that freedom and once you get into pc and you start to learn it and you start to deal with the things it does get easier every day it gets easier it gets funner it gets more um it's it's an experience that that like when I'm playing something like TT Isle of Man three and I'm at 160 frames a second in in a racing game and I feel like I've got just much better control, um and I can see better and the 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 thing just feels like hyper smooth. It's it's such an immersive experience that wow it literally just blows my mind and it makes me it makes me kick myself for not doing for not for not getting a pc a long a long time ago but then it also but then that would have also made me kick myself because then i would have been in the fomo market a lot sooner but i i do i do want to i do want to uh let everybody know that like going forward with this amd experience cards and stuff i'm gonna i'm gonna stop talking as much about like the nvidia side of things and i'm just gonna focus more on the amd thing we're just going to focus more on the AMD thing and uh, we're going to start, you know, trying to even out the content a little more again because I am starting to do a lot more of the PC stuff when this channel was designed mostly as a console channel, but it's a gaming channel and PC is gaming. It's all gaming. We're all, we're all one big family and I want to see if maybe there's a way I can, you know, serve both communities and be able to do good content for everybody to where everybody's feeling to where everybody's feeling good with the content. Like I want, I want to do that. Like that's my new challenge to, to, uh, to see if we can overcome that and, and bring in, you know, console guys and PC guys and help and help people learn how to, uh, you know, help the, help the console guys that want to move to PC, go to PC, help the PC guys that, that maybe they're just, they're just tired of it. And they just want that, that, uh, that console experience to where they can just come in, plug and play. Let, let's try to be a good community for everybody so that we can so that we can build gaming up and not and not tear it down as much as we do with the whole fanboy nonsense because let's face it man i could have easily became an nvidia fanboy and just turned my nose up at amd but i'm thankful and grateful i didn't do that because i love this card i think it's absolutely incredible and having this card um with the software and stuff has has made it more of a 
it, it's it's made it a lot better for me to want to learn things and to be able to get in there and and see what's going on. The the experience is just so much more welcoming as a uh, um as a, as a console gamer coming into the PC space. The AMD experience is a lot more welcoming. So I feel like the AMD is a pretty well-rounded build where I feel like, you know, Nvidia cards are pretty decent, but they do skew more toward the toward the elitist, not elitist, but uh, I would say I would say they scale more for for like extreme PC like wow, but whereas whereas I feel like AMD cards are literally built for gamers cuz they've got the VRAM and they're like, "Hey man, AMD's like well, we just put 16 gigabytes in uh, PS4 or PS5 and Series X, so our top of line cards are going to come with 16. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like at least they're coming to the plate to meet that challenge, to be able to deliver that experience, you know, going forward and to try to save their customers a little bit of money or at least build some sort of goodwill with their customers. So if they do decide to upgrade again, they'll stay with the AMD family that's cool like i like that i appreciate that a lot more than i appreciate fancy new fancy new tricks like like ray tracing and other stuff that that just isn't coming to every single game that just isn't um optimized well enough to give me enough performance cuz i want to use those features but i don't want to play them at 30 frames per second you know what i mean like i don't want to i don't want to have to do that that was the whole reason of not of, of buying a PC is so I don't have to play at 30 frames per second anymore. And if, if Nvidia keeps like, you know, crippling their cards, it just doesn't make any sense to put those features on there that you barely can use. So if you guys like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching.